guys, it's Emma and I'm back today for you with another video. And today we're doing a vlog. Okay, this is gonna be a romance reading vlog. Um, I have realized that with a few genres, I'm very, very picky. Uh, I'm picky with thrillers and romance, all right? Thrillers, haven't really figured out how to navigate those yet. Romance, kind of. I tend to like romances that have like paranormal aspects, dark things in them, incredibly emotional things happening in them. Stuff like that. I need like an extra something. I don't know what that something is, but if it has anything to do with maybe like those three things, then I'm golden, right? Um, so for this vlog, I've got like five different romance books here. Um, all of them, I hope, will be successful reads, uh, romance books that I really, really like. And uh, to start it all off, Okay, um, I want to read Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. I don't know anything about this book right now. I want to read this one first because I made it a goal for me this year to get through more of my bigger books, which I've been doing that and I've been very successful in doing that, which I'm very proud of myself for. But with reading more big books, I'm also unfortunately discovering that a lot of big books uh, think that they are good books simply because they are big. And I'm here to tell you right now that is not in fact correct. So I need like a little pick me up. I need something quick, which Talia Hibbert's books always are for me. I need something short, which this is barely, un like this is barely over uh, 300 pages. Talia Hibbert, she hasn't let me down yet. Okay. And yeah, I'm just gonna be giving y'all updates uh, in and around while I'm reading these books and you know, when I finish them. And yeah, so hopefully, like I said, these will all be successes and I all end up liking all of these books. Um, but in the meantime, let's get running into it. Okay, um, it is what? 10, like two till 10.30. And um, I am damn near halfway through this book already. I'm loving this, call McDonald's. This is so cute. It like, like it's not even funny. All right, um, I genuinely forget just how funny Talia Hibbert writes banter. Like, like there have been so many points in this book where I've just been rolling. They've gotten over what made them enemies in the first place and now they're kind of like on the shaky ground where they're trying to decide whether or not they want to be friends or just friendly. The only gripes that I have with this book right now are uh, just the sheer amount of pop culture references, which that's not a huge deal. And then also uh, something that I've noticed, these are teenagers, right? This is YA and um so a lot of the conversations that they have are going to be very informal which isn't horrible you know that's how teenagers talk but um any important like global or social issues that are brought up are talked about in such formal ways it's just the way it's being discussed doesn't sound normal i guess it, it it sounds rehearsed, but other than that, I'm having a great time. It's becoming a thing of like, he fell first and possibly harder. I'm probably gonna stop for the night um, and I'm probably gonna go to bed in a little bit, but um, I will update you guys with whatever I read tomorrow. I just finished a highly suspicious and I'm fairly cute and five stars. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This, was adorable. Toy Hibbert, anything that anything that this woman writes will have me giggling and kicking my feet. No brainer. This was awesome. It was funny. It was cute. It was quick. I finished this in two days. We've already got one out of the way, which I think was an amazing success. Okay, five stars and it was the first book that we read. Mm, girlfriend, we're, we're on it. Um, but right now, I am probably gonna go around and try and find out what I can do to take a picture for the wolf because I just finished this one and goodness gracious not part of the vlog not not a romance book but if you like high fantasy try this out for size and then when I get back to my apartment 
I will uh, update y'all and show y'all what the next book I'm going to be reading is. So yeah. Meanwhile. We are back from taking pictures. I think I did okay. Um, if you'd like to see them, uh, go up on my Instagram. I'll be putting them up later today. Look, I don't know about y'all. I don't know how y'all's reading year has gone so far. Mine has not been very productive, or at least not as productive as I would like. Um, burnout, she's been on my ass for the past two months, okay? Um, I've been, you know, dodging and weaving her for as long as I can, uh, mostly because of the big books, you know, that's just probably how it's going to be. But having a book like this not only be five stars, but also be finishable in two days. <laughs> you gotta be, whoa! Like, it's not even funny how hyped I feel about that right now. I finished a book in two days. Okay, cheers to that. The one that I want to read next, Twisted Games by Anna Huang. Okay, this is the sequel to Twisted Love by Anna Huang. This is the second book in the Twisted series. And this book is the reason why I wanted to read the Twisted series in the first place, <laughs> okay? Uh, this book is the reason why I read Twisted Love in the first place. Twisted Love um, was not the best book I've ever read. It's not my favorite book I've ever read, but damn was it entertaining, okay? I think each book in the series, it's a quartet, um, plays off of a, like, a specific trope. The first book played off of Brother's Best Friend and Grumpy Sunshine, major Grumpy Sunshine. Um, this one's supposed to play off of like bodyguard romance, which y'all already know I eat that shit up. This, I'm very excited to finally be able to crack open. Later. Okay, so I'm on page 31 of Twisted Games. I'm loving it so far, okay? This book, this book, I can tell it's gonna be very embarrassing for me. Bodyguard romance, that has to be my favorite genre of romance. However, um, after reading a little bit of this book, I've gathered that the second trope that this book is playing off of is the age gap trope. Because there's a very fine line in age gap romances where it's between oh, you know, like, these people are just, like, however many years apart versus he's, like, frothing at the mouth over, like, the age gap between the two of them. Fetishizing, in a way, the age gap and how young she is compared to me. It's just icky. It's just icky, okay? It makes me want to throw up my guts. I'm hoping, because the age gap is, like, 10 years or so, um, I'm hoping that it's not like that because if it is that will ruin an otherwise entertaining ass book for me right now. Reese calling her princess and um, just, just, it's not, it's not fair. funny story. And I know we're all comedians here. We all love to laugh. We all love to giggle. Um, I told y'all that I would update you guys about the book. Long story short, I got a little bit distracted with just how good this book is. I love this book. And this book is 422 pages. All right. Um, I'm on page 268. This book is so much fun, okay? It's got the bodyguard trope, which we all know I eat that shit up. Um, it is tense. It's got the angst, which the angst is not unnecessary or stupid, at least not in my opinion. It's funny, all right? Um, it's got the steaminess. And not to mention the age gap factor, which was the thing that I was really walking on fucking eggshells with, okay? Because if you know, you know, um, age gap can be done either really, really well or really, really bad. <laughs> and this book is actually doing it really, really well so far. So far. So far. So far. Please. Reese and Bridget, they're my favorite. Sorry, Alex and Ava who? Whomstead of. I'm sorry. The second that Alex started singing in the first book, I wrote him off immediately. I was like, huh? I think there's going to be a way that they're finally going to be together. 
and the out that I think that Anna Huang is gonna give the characters just sounds so lifetime to me, and I love it. Later that same evening. And just like that, book number two, done. Five stars. That's what I mean! This could honestly be in the running for one of my new favorite books of all time. That's two books done. I am so happy with this. Um, and I'm probably going to go to bed now because it is midnight and my head hurts and I'm tired. <laughs> so I'll probably update y'all with the next book that I'm going to read when I wake up because it's technically tomorrow today. Tomorrow for sure. Today is going to be kind of like a break day for me. Um, I'm about to go get groceries. And um, while I'm at the grocery store, I am going to put up on my Instagram um, a poll for you guys to choose between uh, the two books that I'm going to read next. Because I'm not, I have three more to read for this reading blog, but I'm not too, let's just say I'm not as excited to read these three that I have left as I was to read Twisted Games or Highly Suspicious and I'm Fairly Cute. You know what I mean? You guys can choose uh, between If He Had Been With Me and Thief of Hearts. That poll is going to be up and then a poll to choose between the falsies um, that I put on tomorrow is going to be up there as well. Soon after. I have no idea what the hell this is. <clears throat> it's lemonade wine cocktail. <laughs> Deliciously sweet wine blended with real lemonade flavors. This is gonna be a little bit of a gamble, okay? I haven't tried it. I was gonna try it with you guys. I don't know, lemonade and wine? Cause there was this one and then there was one that was like peach tea. All right, let me see. It just smells like wine. <laughs> it, it dead ass just smells like wine, okay. Not great. Mm. Oh my. See, I like sangria because it's tart. And you'd think with the lemonade it would be tart because it's lemonade, but the tartness of the lemons are not coming through. It's the sugar of lemonade that's coming through. I guess on a scale from one to 10, 10 being um, I'd chug this every damn day of my life, uh, and one being, I wouldn't even drink this when I was drunk. I'd give it a three. I would drink it to get more drunk. There we go. But Stone Cold Sober, uh, -uh. you gotta give me something else before I drink that. There ain't no way. Who concludes wine tasting with Emma? <laughs> Good morning, campers. I had a lot of stuff to do yesterday, school-wise, which is why I didn't do any reading yesterday. However, also yesterday, um, the polls ended, and if he had been with me, one out. Okay, so this is the next book that we're reading, and uh, The Witchy Nails won out as well. I don't know anything about this book, other than it's supposed to be very, very sad. It's like two friends who used to be like, like this, and then they grew apart, and it's the girl thinking about if her former guy friend had been with her, Something like that? I don't know, but um, I'm ready to cry. <laughs> I'm always ready to cry. Hello. I just got back from the gym. Not the best experience that I've ever had at the gym because it was just a whole myriad of factors including the fact that I forgot to bring my headphones. <laughs> so, I don't know. I did bring, um, if he had been with me down there to read, so I was just, you know, reading this pretty much the whole time, which, you know what, definitely helped. But, <clears throat> I have not updated you guys about this book at all. Um, I am on page 252. I am well over halfway through this book already. Um, and that's about the only thing good that I can say about it. The writing style, first of all, is really not clicking for me. 
um it's fast sure but it's very choppy like it's just this book is literally just simple sentences reading it in the voice in my head it is so choppy because it th th there's just no flow there's no flow to be found and the main character autumn she while i understand her to a degree the farther i get into this book the more insufferable she becomes and it's just i don't really understand why there isn't any plot because if it's supposed to be a character driven novel cool but there's nothing about these characters that's even decently engaging right now <laughs> I'm really just reading it to get it over with. Much, much later. So, um, it's a little after 11 o'clock and I finished If He Had Been With Me. One star. We now have beef, okay? Me and this book now have beef because she really thought she could come up after Twisted Games and be like, let me give you this insufferable ass main character that really isn't written very well. She really doesn't have any autonomy um in regards to boys uh she has this holier than thou attitude towards specifically other girls which is i feel like there's something to unpack there let me give you this bare bones char character driven book that really could be seen as a cult book given how many times uh this group of friends uses this really insidious ass group think to be like oh we would love to do this i love this cover but um yeah i feel like i just got pranked <laughs> i feel like i just got pranked okay so that's three books down and um we now only have two to go i have thief of hearts and then Say You Swear Left to Read. And these I think are the biggest ones on my TBR for this vlog, but yeah. So tomorrow we start this little ditty, all right? Um, again, I don't quite remember what this one is about, but I mean, I assume I bought it for a reason, so. Hello, everybody. Um, we have come to the point in our journey where I am DNFing a book and I'm DNFing Thief of Hearts. Okay, um, I was loving it at first. And then we got to, you know, this point in the book where I'm just like, I'm calling it quits. I remember why I bought this book in the first place. Um, it, it, it's a bodyguard romance. And I was loving it, like I said, in the first half of the book. But then the second half of the book came along and I was like, ugh. We've hit stagnant water, all right? Uh, mosquito eggs are everywhere. There's two reasons as to why I'm DNFing it. One reason is just because it's gotten boring. And then the other reason why I'm DNFing this is because um, there's just been one too many instances for me personally um, of Gerard, the male love interest, us being in his head and him admiring Lucy, AKA the female love interest, him admiring like her, her body, her beauty, whatever, whatever. And then it drifting more towards, you know, I could rape her, but I'm not going to. Good for you, dude. Do you want to fuck a medal for that? Like, congratulations. You didn't rape a woman. Like, what? What? Like, there's so many instances in this damn book where it's like even Gerard, all right, on multiple other occasions okay not just other men but gerard as well um who have been like oh my gosh this woman is so beautiful she's so gorgeous her beauty is so immense that it just tempts me to rape her am i really supposed to root for this dude to get with her now i'm probably gonna give it like two stars okay uh the one star over one star uh being because the first half was good and that's it. No, she had a good run. She tried a little something something. That little something something really didn't work, all right? And I don't endorse that little something something, okay? Not where I lay my head to sleep. Okay, so it's however many days after that last update because uh, finals are coming up. The last book that we have to read for this vlog is Say You Swear 
by Megan Brandy. We're gonna start this today. This is the last book for the vlog, and this is the biggest book of the vlog. I think this is like, what, 500 and something pages, which... 538. This is 538 pages, which should be definitely interesting. I don't know anything about this book other than it's, I think, college? I think these, I, I think the characters are in college, and it's a sports romance. I've never read a sports romance before. So this should be interesting. I am on page 319, yeah, of Say You Swear. I'm a pretty good chunk of the way through. I'm actually really proud of myself. I'm at a bit of a crossroads here, if I'm gonna be frank and blank, uh, because I don't know, it's not the worst thing I've ever read, but it's also not the best thing that I've ever read. If you had to ask me to describe this book, like how I'm feeling about this book in one word, it'd be cringe. And it's the writing. Okay, there's three aspects of the writing, okay? The first one is the language being used in this book is just odd. It's either something that I don't expect teenagers to say, um, or I don't expect anybody <laughs> to say, honestly, in like real life conversations. And then the writing itself <sighs> feels disjointed a lot of the time because the author has a tendency to move very 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 quickly but like from scene to scene and that's not bad it's just there's little to no transition in between so I have to like go back and reread and be like okay well wait a minute where are we now then the third aspect of it is uh just the dialogue the dialogue is so cringy I've heard the word biatch used more times in this singular book, in this singular collection of paper than I have the last 10 years of my life. The only thing I'm really enjoying about this book right now uh, is Noah Riley, and that's it, all right? Noah Riley is book boyfriend material. He's husband material, okay? If he doesn't want Ariana by the end of this, where can I sign up? I'll take him with open arms, baby doll. Moments later. I need someone to beat Chase's ass just real, real quick. And I need it to be Noah. Chase is really out here talking about, I want you to pick me. So pick me. Choose me. Love me. Because, no, it's his thing about him wanting the cake and eating it too. Okay, because what? After you humiliated me, made me feel like an idiot, um, and literally flat out told me that you didn't want to be in a relationship with me. Now you want to be in a relationship with me. Now that I'm in a relationship with someone else. Make it make sense, bitch, because it doesn't right now. I'm enjoying the tea. A little longer than a few minutes later. <laughs> you. Oh, man. Okay. I'm on page 392 and I'm done. <laughs> You, you, like, I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous. I'm done. I'm DNFing this book. I apologize for any cussing that goes on for the rest of this video, but you got me fucked up. <laughs> you have the wrong girl if you think I'm going to continue reading this book. After you just hit me with a triple combo, all right? You hit me with her running into the middle of the street for no damn reason. Like, I about laughed my ass off. Like, like what, is this a comedy now? Why why did she do that? And then the second thing, you hit us with the accidental pregnancy trope, which, no ma'am. And then third, direct, like, maybe five pages after we find out that she was pregnant, you hit me with the amnesia trope. And I'm done. You had that, you had the writing, you had like these these male characters being m more and more misogynistic by the page. Um, you had her friends who just sucked. I'm sorry, you're telling me y'all gave her crap for her not being around y'all because Chase literally made her uncomfortable when he would dog after her about her being in a healthy relationship and him wanting her to be in a relationship with him? Really? Y Mason, who's so overprotective of her, who can't even stand the thought of her sharing brainwaves with a dude. 
You're telling me he's not gonna do anything about that? Funny. It feels like this author deadass put a blindfold over herself and then was just throwing darts. And this dartboard was just a list of tropes. It got to the point where I was just laughing because it was so, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Officially DNF'd on page 392 and whatever percentage Goodreads wants to tell me, okay? I'm, <laughs> so you guys, um, yeah, it is now April 30th and we have reached the end of the vlog. I've read five romance books. Let's just go right through them really quickly. All right, the first book that we read for this vlog was Highly Suspicious and I'm Fairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. I gave this five stars. Uh, the second book that we read was Twisted Games by Anna Huang. I gave this five stars. Uh, the third book that we read was If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nolan. I gave it one star. Uh, the next book was Thief of Hearts by Teresa Medeiros. Medeiros. Um, and I DNF this and gave it two stars. And then the last book that we read was Say You Swear by Megan Brandy, which I also DNF'd and I gave it one star. I did find two romance books that I thought were amazing and I found a new favorite book of all time. So honestly, I think that this was a success, okay? Um, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed the vlog. Um, I hope that you guys will take some recommendations from this video. If you were thinking about reading any of these books, don't let whatever I say about them dissuade you, okay? Read them for yourself, see if you like them, see if you can find something in it that I obviously didn't because that would mean that y'all found a new good book and shoot if that ain't what we all want okay I'm gonna try and get this video up sometime oh, like in between finals week uh, which I think starts tomorrow Ugh. and uh, so that this can maybe serve as like an after finals relaxation point for some of y'all that have taken finals y'all got this by the way so you guys with that being said I hope that you've enjoyed the vlog I hope that you will continue to look out for more stuff on my channel that you guys are staying safe that you guys do well on your finals and I hope that you guys have a good rest of your day